In June last year, a computer virus called Stuxnet was discovered lurking in the data banks of power plants, traffic control systems and factories around the world. 20 times more complex than any previous virus code, it had an array of capabilities. Among them, the ability to turn up the pressure inside nuclear reactors or switch off oil pipelines and Stuxnet could tell the system operators everything was normal. Unlike most viruses, Stuxnet doesn't carry the usual forged security clearance that helps viruses burrow into systems. It actually had a real clearance, stolen from one of the most reputable computer technology companies in the world. It exploited security gaps that system creators are unaware of. These holes are known as zero days, and the most successful viruses exploit them. The details of a zero day can be sold on the black market for $100,000. Stuxnet took advantage of 20 zero days. But once it got into a system, it didn't always activate. Buried deep in the Stuxnet code was a specific target. Without that target, the virus remained dormant. What was it looking to shut down? The centrifuges that spin nuclear material at Iran's enrichment facilities. Stuxnet was a weapon. The first to be made entirely out of code. The Washington-based Institute for Science and International Security says the virus may have shut down a thousand centrifuges at Natanz, Iran's main enrichment facility, last year. In November, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the UN's nuclear watchdog, said Iran had suspended work at its nuclear facilities without explaining why. Many observers credited Stuxnet. Last month, the Iranian government conceded the virus's infection of the Bashir nuclear facility, still under construction, meant that switching the plant on could lead to a national electricity blackout. Iran has responded to the attack with an open call for hackers to join the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and has reportedly amassed the second largest online army in the world. So who was behind Stuxnet? There's no evidence beyond rumor. Some have it that Israel is responsible because the virus code apparently contains references to the Hebrew Bible. Others believe the US was involved in the testing and development. The finger has even been pointed at Siemens mobile phone company, whose software is used by the Iranian regime. The most important question may not be who designed it, but who will redesign it. The evolution has been so fast that nine months after its detection, the first virus that could crash power grids or destroy oil pipelines is available online for anyone to download and tinker with. You can watch people on YouTube pulling Stuxnet apart. It's an open source weapon. And there's no way of knowing who will use it or what they will use it for. There's a report out about a new computer virus that may be aimed at destroying a bricks and mortar facility. The virus is called Stuxnet, and according to the Financial Times, it may be aimed at Iran's controversial nuclear facility. Joining us now is Richard Falkenrath. He is principal of the Chertoff Group and a Bloomberg contributing editor. He has also been a White House advisor on security. Richard, thanks so much for being with us this morning. First of all, how does this virus work? So this, this virus attacks the SCADA systems for industrial facilities, and that means supervisory data and control systems. What it does is it, it originally started with a USB drive. Someone would take an infected USB drive, stick it into a computer, and then it propagates through the system. It's a worm, which means it propagates by itself. It keeps moving through the system, and it hides its tracks. But, Richard, I mean, does the, it have to be placed there? It seems like it does. It started with, we think it started with a USB drive that was physically connected to one of the machines, and then it went itself through the network. And the, the techie people who analyze this think this is one of the most sophisticated pieces of malware they've ever seen. And the reason for that is it's using stolen certificates, the legitimate digital certificates that real companies use to identify themselves when they communicate. They were stolen. And then it ha exploits four previously unknown vulnerabilities in the window operating system. These are called day zero 
vulnerabilities. And well, the theory is, among the security experts, is that this took the resources of a nation state to create a piece of malware this sophisticated. Well, Richard, I was going to ask you about that because I'm reading this article as well. I read it. It said, well-financed, highly organized team had to put it together. What are the chances that the U.S. created it? And I'm asking you that because it seems like Iran has the most infections out there. That's right. Iran has by far the most infections, followed by India and Indonesia. And uh, it is theoretically possible that the U.S. government did this, but in my judgment, it's a very remote possibility. More likely, uh, frankly, is Israel, uh, that Israel did it. It's not impossible that some group of hackers did it, but the security experts that are studying this really think this required the resources of a nation state. For the U.S. government to, to launch a piece of malware like this against industrial systems, a very risky thing to do because it can't really be controlled. It can spread beyond the place that's being targeted. But I want to ask, I mean, do, do countries I mean, we're talking about Iran in this context of its controversial nuclear site, but is Iran really running its nuclear power, its nuclear plant on Windows software? Well, yeah, the, 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 the main power plant there uses Windows PCs with a, a Siemens-provided industrial control software package, and that in the diagnostics is how this virus got into it, and that's an increasingly common uh, configuration. It also seems uh, of increasing concern because, I don't know, I've used Windows, I know other people who have, and it's not stable even without a virus sometimes. So, I mean, should a nuclear system really be hinged on that kind of software? Well, uh, that, that is the nature of the modern uh, economy and our technology. We rely heavily on these IT systems. In this case, the virus exported, exploited th four vulnerabilities that the w Windows manufacturers did not know about. Two of them have now been closed, but there's two that they're still working on and then are going to close soon. And that's why it's so important to always stay up with your software patches that come along. So, Richard, I mean, and just getting back to what you said about you think that Israel did it, I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess that they will never admit it, even if they did. Uh, and I wouldn't say I think that Israel did it. I'd say it's more likely than that the U.S. did it. Uh, this is almost impossible to figure out. The forensics of tracing this back, trying to determine who launches these things originally, is extremely difficult. So this is really pure conjecture on who did it. I do know something, though, about how the U.S. government makes its decisions on whether to launch what we call an offensive information warfare attack, which this would be. Okay. And uh, the bar is quite high. All right, Richard. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Richard Falkenrath, contributing editor here at Bloomberg and principal at